Hello friends, welcome to The Hindu News Analysis presented by Deeksha Space. Today in this session, we are going to discuss about December 11th, 2020, the Hindu newspaper. Hindu newspaper, for that matter, plays very important role with respect to competitive examinations. Many aspirants find it difficult to relate Hindu newspaper with the static syllabus provided by the UPSC. Current affairs are very important for UPSC civil service examination or state public service commission examinations. Development of knowledge with respect to current affairs on day to day basis and understanding the static portion given and interlinking with the syllabus will help you to develop your personality and knowledge required for the examination on day to day basis. So in this platform, we are trying to simplify the process of preparation for the aspirants both in English and Hindi. Over a period of time, we will include the static subjects or static portions also in order to make the learning easy and simplified so that the aspirants who are finding it difficult to go through Hindi newspaper can reduce their burden and pressure and enjoy this process of journey towards becoming civil servants. So let us start today's Hindu news analysis. Today's first article, Helpage India presented UN Population Award for 2020. Here, first let us understand what is UN Population Award. UN Population Award or UNFPA, United Nations Population Fund, which was formerly known as United Nations Fund for Population Activities. So it is a UN agency which is aimed at improving reproductive and maternal health worldwide. UNFPA supports around 150 countries across four regions of the world. UNFPA it began its operation in 1969 as United Nations Fund for Population Activities under UNDVF, so United Nations Development Fund. In 1971, it was placed under the authority of UNGA. Then it got name changed as United Nations Population Fund in 1987. However, it is shortened term as UNFPA only. So United Nations Fund for Population Activities, these are associated with sustainable development goals also. In September 2015, 193 member states of United Nations adopted sustainable development goals which are 17 aimed at transforming the world over next 15 years that is till 2030. These goals are designed to eliminate poverty, discrimination, abuse and preventable deaths address the environmental destructions. So here based on United Nations Population Fund activities, let us see how Helpage India has been working and this United Nations Population Award, what relevance does it have for Helpage India? Helpage India has been awarded with United Nations Population Award for 2020 as per the release of UNFPA. It was established by United Nations General Assembly in 1981. This award is given in recognition for the contribution in the field of population and reproductive health. The committee of UNFPA has decided and announced the following. For the first time in the history, UNFPA award has been honored to any of the Indian institution. In the last 28 years, that was in 1992, it was presented to JRD Tata as an individual laureate and now after 28 years, it has been awarded to Helpage India, which has been working for the cause of disadvantaged older persons to improve their quality of life for over four decades. So this is a great recognition and it is a great step for the activities being done by Helpage India. So the information what we have learned here will help us to understand how the institutions or other institutions with respect to general studies paper 2 are working for the development of society or social causes. Second article is with respect to Asian Development Bank which narrows India's financial year 21 GDP contraction projection to 8%. Here also let us see first what is Asian Development Bank. Asian Development Bank is a regional development bank which was established in 1966 and it is headquartered at Philippines. So this is very important to understand with respect to prelims and mains also. So which is headquartered at Philippines. The company has 31 field offices around the world which works for social and economic development. 
The bank admits the members of United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific and non-regional development countries. Today, ADB has around 68 members totally which are affiliated to it. Asian Development Bank works on the model of World Bank and has similar weighted voting system which is distributed in proportion with members capital subscription. Another important thing to remember is ADB has official UN observer status. Please remember this. And as on 2018 December, Japan and United States hold largest portion of shares followed by China, then India and Australia at the last. So with this information about ADB, let us see what ADB is telling about GDP contraction of India. As we all know, ADB predicted the GDP of India for the year 2021 to be 9% has revised its estimation to 8%. This shows the economy of India which is predicted to be growing is actually getting the pace which is required more than what was expected. So even RBI has said that RBI governor Shakti Kant Das has said that the economy is recapturing faster than the anticipated and the growth rate is likely to take positive turn in the second half of the current financial year. So ADB which was estimating the GDP to be 9% contracted has revised it to 8% contraction which need to be remembered. And with the easing of lockdown after the pandemic, supply chain disruptions which caused food inflation at an average of 9.1% in the first 7 months of 2020 and 2021. Here we are speaking about headline inflation. We all know what is inflation. So what does headline inflation mean? Inflation means general price rise of goods and services is called inflation. Headline inflation is measure of total inflation within an economy which includes food and energy prices also which tend to be more volatile and prone to inflationary spikes. So food and energy which is included that is called headline inflation and another one is core inflation. What is core inflation which does not include volatile products like food and energy because this food and energy it is dependent on the supply and which might vary due to international sanctions or flood or climate. So in order to have a long term future predictions of any economy, usually core inflation is taken into consideration. Headline inflation in India, which was previously calculated with the help of wholesale price index has been revised to consumer price index. So in India, headline inflation is calculated under the reference of consumer price index. Core inflation, as I said, it does not involve volatile and prone products like food and energy. So total inflation in the economy, excluding food and energy is called core inflation and total inflation within an economy, which includes food and energy is called headline inflation. So in India, this headline inflation was at an average of 9.1% in the first seven months of 2021, which has reduced this headline inflation to 6.9% in the same period. So here two things need to be understood. What is the GDP prediction done by ADB so that Indian economic system is going to revive after this pandemic? And what is the current headline inflation and core inflation in order to make the strategies or policies for the economic development of the country? Next article is with respect to Morocco to normalize ties with Israel. It will be the fourth nation to do this year after Bahrain, Sudan and UAE. If you know Bahrain and UAE and Sudan had developed diplomatic ties with Israel in the year 2020 and Morocco is going to be the fourth nation. First let us see Morocco where does it come. Here a map based question can be asked Mediterranean Sea is separating Spain and Morocco here. So this Morocco and Spain is separated by Mediterranean Sea. This can be a prelims question. So next here we need to understand a detailed understanding of how these relations between Arab countries and Israel were halted and now how they are going out of the previous legacy what they had and developing a diplomatic ties 
for a better future in the region. So Morocco is the fourth nation after Bahrain, Sudan and UAE which developed relations. Previously, Egypt and Jordan have also developed relations that is diplomatic relations with Israel in the year 1979 with Egypt and in the year 1994 with Jordan. So we will comprehensively cover this Israel-Palestine issue and along with that how these Arab countries which are getting into diplomatic ties with Israel is going to have a geopolitical changes in that region. As of now, exam point of view from this article, we need to understand which all the Arab countries have diplomatic types with Israel and map based question can be asked from this article. In this article, all is now fair in India's ailing pedagogic spaces. Pedagogic means the method of teaching or something related to teaching is called pedagogic. So after COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen there has been drastic or sudden shift in the mode of teaching from offline to online. When a teacher is from nursery is being asked and she is being told to teach over online, I don't know how effectively or how far that is going to help the nursery students to understand our online mode about the things taught for them. We have seen that this change in the mode has affected children psychologically and educational theory has been redefined entirely after this pandemic. The ethos have been astonishingly charged up quite for some time now, given the scale of market the children offer for information technology and related industries. School authorities in private and state officials have equally been under pressure to make decisions for this new journey of teaching. Pandemic has put up a lot of pressure over private and public education system. However, we find that here in this pandemic situation, few students were given with laptop or few had a leverage of using online sources for their learning. The students or the parents who could not afford to this online learning for the example with resources or internet were not taken care or they were not taken into consideration. However, they were considered as substitute. So the children's unbounded access to internet and their increasing facility with the smartphone has been a concern for the students who have resources and internet availability with them. Here the major challenge is middle class parents were preoccupied with planning the best possible post pandemic life for their children. They had voices and concerns against online classes but their concern after the post pandemic life has kept their voices low. Parents have no idea on how to judge the competing claims made by private companies or courses that will protect their children from learning losses incurred due to school closure. Here in the article, the writer has been clearly stating that there is no safety net for children. We have seen the method of child learning have changed from classroom teacher or teacher student relationship to self styled video teachers on every subject. Manufacturers of video games, fantasy app makers, coding instructors have become their part and parcel of life. Here we need to understand that there are claims that analytical skills can be developed by coding. We can see many of the advertisements in YouTube or in uh, you channels, TV channels where we see that coding will help a, a student to improve their analytical skills. The company's claim with respect to analytical skills and critical enquiry are being used as brand signs for the so-called 21st century skills. However, here one thing has to be understood that critical enquiry, which means ability to place a problem in a wider context. Analytical skills means developing knowledge or skill by contextualized enquiry should be transferable to new problems belonging to different spheres of life which include social sphere, complex or constant change. Analytical skills help the student to adapt themselves to the changing social environment. Whereas critical thinking helps the student to conserve or to see the problem in a wider context. Both these are being claimed by this 21st century so-called skills to be developed with the help of coding. The educational theory which has developed in order to inculcate these values in the students have been lost. However, this educational theory which sees these limitations, they hardly matter for these IT related industries. 
However, these companies which are promoting this 21st century skills don't know how they will help the students to perceive their critical analysis or analytical skills for their future life. In this present generation, we see that Indian parents are being supported or are being convinced by stating that Japan or Western countries have become more tech savvy and which is helping the school policies in India to accommodate parents and students stating that it will be helpful for them. However, if you can see, Japan has said to be replacing printed textbooks with digital ones. This is not so. Online teaching has become a supplement for the students. There is no case where China, Japan or other European countries have undisturbed the primary schools even under pandemic conditions. So, outcome driven teaching and frequent testing which has emerged as part of new ideology in education has been beneficial with online mode. Wherein we see in the present social context, parents have a habit of making children more competitive in order to make their children precious. So parents feel happy to told that children is precious and the student is hardworking. And they feel happy when children start speaking or they show a sign of geniusness or they show a sign of being mature. So the competitiveness has been in our social values from mythologically and present online teaching is facilitating or encouraging frequent testing wherein student can see their results at an instant and can have a feeling of winning a game like suppose uh, they are playing a game and they feel yes I have won this game something like that in frequent testing mode also they feel happy when they get a good number of marks. However, there are few situations wherein parents are also taking a way which is not suitable for present context of children's psychology. We feel the online gambling or child pornography or any other means which can affect us as internet being an ocean, the parents have developed a thought like the students or their children are getting ready for the real world. This is going to cause at some point for the children who are going only through online mode. However, these things have to be taught or taken care while taking this pedagogical method of teaching. Next article is true to its name. The Drug Controller General of India did well to seek more data before clearing emergency use of vaccines. So here in this article, as we have seen in the previous few weeks, that Serum Institute of India, that is Pune-based Serum Institute of India and Hyderabad-based Bharat Biotech have been putting for a priority emergency use approval with respect to Drug Controller General of India for vaccines which can be used against this pandemic fight. So, Drug Controller General of India at a stroke of a pen has put hold to these vaccines based on recommending the more data is required with respect to the safety of vaccine. So, before going into analysis of this article, let us see first Drug Controller General of India, which is a department of Central Drugs Standard Organization. So, Central Drug Standard Control Organization of Government of India, which is responsible for approval of licenses of specified categories of drugs such as blood, blood products, vaccines and sera in India. Drug Control of India comes under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Please remember this, this can be asked in a statement based questions. So Drug Controller General of India comes under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So it sets standards for manufacturing, sale, import and distribution of drugs in India. Generally, the functions can be categorized as it acts as an appellate authority in case of disputes regarding quality of drugs. It acts as preparing and maintenance of national reference records, training of drug analysts deputed for state drug control laboratories, analysis of cosmetics received as survey samples from Central Drug Standard Organization. So these are a prior background of Drug Controller or General of India. So here in this article, in the present pandemic, where vaccine have been become a priority and as per the statement of Prime Minister Narendra Modi that in few weeks India will see a vaccine was a point of contention where India might be lenient with respect to the procedure for the approval of vaccines. However, the rejection of vaccine by Drug Controller General of India is a clear evidence of trust 
which a public has put in DGCI has been uphold by asking the regulators or vaccine in companies to come up with sufficient data to prove the safety of the vaccine. Here we need to understand Bharat Biotech which was seeking approval with, with respect to the vaccine was in phase 3 trial. However, it depended on interim safety data or immunogenicity data of phase 1 and phase 2 trials. The phase 3 trials has only begun in mid-November. So without this proper data, DGCI has clearly rejected the emergency approval. Serum Institute, again which has submitted interim safety and efficacy data of Oxford vaccine, which is again phase 2 and phase 3 clinical trials. However, apart from UK, no other country has approved this Serum Institute. In India, the phase 3 trials which started in September 21 had to be given second dose which is administered for 28 days then given the second dose after few weeks. The second dose data are not available with respect to serum. DGCI has rightly rejected the approval of the vaccine. However, over a period of time, nine global vaccine manufacturers had signed a joint pledge that they would not seek premature approval from regulatory authorities that would COVID-19 vaccines will be of higher standards and keep safety of vaccinated individuals as their top priority. Indian manufacturers are also striving for the same with highest ethical standards and submit comprehensive data for emergency use approval. However, in further seeking approval for emergency use may turn detrimental and companies may even run the risk of losing public trust if anything goes wrong. So in this article, the action taken by DGCI is analyzed with respect to public trust and with respect to safety and quality of vaccine which is going to come up in future. Today's last article, Iran is enhancing its nuclear program which can be reversed if talks with US are revived. So here we need to understand that Iran has passed a bill in the parliament for enriching uranium to a higher level from 5% to 20%. However, one thing here to be remo remembered is the enrichment to 20% is taking away the technical step from weapon grade enrichment of uranium which requires 90%. It stops the access of UN spectators to the country to top nuclear facilities that is for the next two months where Joe Biden is going to take over presidentship of United States. So in this regard the bill passed in Iran that is parliament holds true and we need to understand the background for the step being taken by Iran. Before going into the article, let us see the map of Iran first. So this is the map of Iran which is bordered or which has bordered with Pakistan, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Iraq, Turkey and sea route or sea border with United Arab Emirates. So these are the border states trying to helpful for map based questions if any they are being asked more in UPSC. So let us get into the analysis of article. Here P5 plus 1 nations is being speak of spoken first. What are this P5? P5 are the 5 nations which have permanent membership in United Nations Security Council. So United Nations Security Council has 5 permanent members. Those are China. Russia, UK, US and France. So these are five nations and this Germany is being included to call it as P5 plus 1. So why these five nations plus Germany is being included here to deal with Iran's issue because Germany has a great trade relations with Iran. Though Iran is good with or they have more nuclear facilities but the hardware and software for them is being provided by Germany. So the trade holds a very big amount of value with respect to Iranian relation. So in 2015, in order to scuttle the country's nuclear program, then this P5 plus one countries that is including Germany got into an agreement to have a new beginning in West Asia. Barack Obama's administration's calculation at that time was Iran has to be blocked from the path of developing a bomb 
विच इज इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ एवरी वन हवर वाशिंगटन सा इरास् न्यूक्लियर प्रोग्राम इन टू थौसंड फिफ्टीन विच वाज एट एन अडवांस स्टेज एज न्यूक्लियर सेक्यूरीटी प्रॉब्लम एंड इट टैकल इट यूजिंग इट्स डिप्लोमेसी बट इरा रईवल वर् इज्रेल एंड सऊदी अरेबिया विच वर् आलो पार्ट आफ् आर विच वर् आलो अलइस आफ् अमेरिका दे सा दिस इरा प्रॉब्लम एज अनदर वे दे बिलीव तेहरा इंफ्लूंस अक्रॉस टू वेस्ट एशिया वेर इट इस बैकिंग नॉन स्टेट मिलिटर्स अथवा नॉन स्टेट आक्टर्स इट इस बीइंग बैक्ड बै तेहरा एंड इट्स आंबिशन टू एमर्ज एज डॉमेंट पिलर इन द रीजन दट इस पॉलीटिकली हेफ्ट शिया कम्युनिटी वाज टू बी स्टॉप्ड सो न्यूक्लियर प्रोग्राम यस इट इस अ प्रॉब्लम बट फॉर इज्राइल एंड सऊदी अरेबिया अपार्ट फ्रॉम न्यूक्लियर प्रोग्राम देर वॉज अनदर प्रॉब्लम विच वॉज हॉन्टिंग दट इज development of tehran as dominant pillar in the region when donald trump administration took over it completely took a different line of action against iran and us pulled out of nuclear deal when new even though united nations gave a certification that iran was compliant with the terms and reimposed tanks sanctions on tehran that is donald trump was aligned towards israel and saudi arabia this action gave a window for israel to have covert and overt operations in 2018 if you remember israeli spies carried out a daring mission at a warehouse inside iran and stole thousands of documents related to iran's nuclear program and in this meantime in syria where iran has deployed militias backing the government of bashar al assad israel continued to bomb iranian targets but now since there is transformation of administration from donald trump to joe biden and joe biden being the vice president of barack obama's administration is positive towards reviving the iranian nuclear deal in that regard there is a concern has being again got down on israel and united arab emirates so if you all remember on november 27th mohammad mohsin fakhrizadeh a top iranian nuclear physicist was assassinated at the outskirts of tehran and israel was blamed to have this attack tel aviv also did not deny the allegation it is difficult to see israel's motive but there is a clear indication that it wants to set back iran's nuclear program by taking out prominent scientists and scuttle the possible revival of the nuclear deal with this attack if iran deterrence or iran is going against israel which is an alliance of america it will have a negative implications and trump administration could hit iran heavier on iranian nuclear facilities and it will lead to a closing of diplomatic path if iran does not retaliate to israel it will show that iran has getting weaker and it will give a path for other parties to have more attacks of this kind so instead of having any activities which will trap iran into this provocation the parliament has passed this bill of enriching the uranium of less than 5% to 20% this is a technical step where weapon grade uranium requires 90% and it will keep iran out of the watch of united nations about its new athwa top nuclear facilities for the next 2 months so iran is taking a calculated risk by enhancing its nuclear program which can be reversed if talks are revived but it is leaving the israel problem unaddressed addressed for now so this step by iran is a calculated step and hoping that in this region it will give a new idea and new motive for the development this is all about today's hindu newspaper analysis so we will meet again with new edition tomorrow till then take care of your health study well and enjoy your journey of being civil servant till then jai hind